Kyle Lyle from Austin, Texas, and uh, the company has a large investment in the Washington Post company, which has many cable television s systems serving non-major metropolitan areas, as well as a recent investment in TCA cable. And so I was hoping to get a comment about the cable television business generally. And the other question is about your philosophy of children handling money and inheriting money. The first, first question about cable, um, the Washington Post Company does have, we, and we own about 17 or so percent of the Washington Post Company, and I believe they have 700,000 plus homes. And as you say, they're in largely in smaller areas. It, it's been a, a good business, and as you know, uh, cable prices have been uh, galloping here in the last year or thereabouts. From the standpoint of the Post, that's bad news because uh, the Post would have been a net buyer uh, of cable and will not be a seller. And it's, it's very, really very much like our attitude towards stocks and stock prices. I mean, it is not good news for the Washington Post Company when one came towards stocks and stock prices. I mean, it is not good news for the Washington Post Company when one case gusting funds is going to be a generator of funds over cable. It's way better off if cable prices go down than, than up. Uh, the TCA uh, is not, uh, Lou Simpson runs a separate portfolio uh, at GEICO, equity portfolios. So I've never read an annual report of the uh, TCA cable. I know nothing about it. Uh, uh, if he still has it, it's an investment of lose at, at Geico for Geico, and it's not uh, it's not something that that falls under my management at all. That's a point I should mention because periodically the press picks up some some item that says that Berkshire, or sometimes it says that I am buying X, Y, or Z, and sometimes that's true, but sometimes it isn't true because filings are made on behalf of various other entities that are associated with us, and I don't know anything about them. I saw one here a couple of weeks ago reporting that I was, I don't know whether it was me or Berkshire, I think it was me personally, it was buying uh, some real estate investment trust with the name Omega in it. I'd never heard of it, uh, but that story appeared various places. Well, I can assure you I filed no form with the federal government that said that I was buying that stock, although you would have deduced that from certain press accounts. But various other entities, I think that, that there may be a subsidiary of General Re, New England Asset Management, that may have to report periodically on what they do. And since General Re is owned by Berkshire and New England Asset Management is a part of General Re, you know, who knows what they pick up on that. So. I, I do caution you generally to be a little careful about reports as to what is being bought or sold uh, by me or by Berkshire uh, Hathaway. Uh, now, as I remember, there was a uh, second question that I didn't like quite as well to answer. And, uh, <laughs> Charlie, you, you want to tackle that one? <laughs> well, I think there was more interest in the future of cable. Uh, that is. <laughs> We have uh, demonstrated a signal lack of aptitude in correctly diagnosing the future of cable in a way that made us a lot of money. And uh, we've done that in spite of the fact that in retrospect it seems like a lot that was perfectly obvious was, was lying around. Uh, to date, cable has not, I mean, cable has been here for, what, 30 years or so. Cable has not made extraordinary returns on invested capital at all, I mean, but it, uh, it's always had the promise of greater returns and extraordinary returns on invested capital at all, I mean, but it, uh, it's always had the promise of greater returns and it wouldn't have to keep investing money in it the way it, uh, you have had to date. Returns will be made in cable relative to invested capital, not relative to purchase price of them, but relative to the invested capital in the property itself. And as I say, that has not really been the case has uh, uh, it's been the case with cable programming 
uh, cable programming, there have been a lot of money made in relation to capital investment. But, but in terms of the actual investment in cable facilities, the capital investment has been such, the, the expenditures in developing systems have been such, that the returns so far have not been great. But it's, but uh, the prices for cable systems now would indicate that people think that those returns are finally going to start flowing in in a big way. What was the second part of that question that you had? <laughs> oh, inherited wealth and children, kid, yeah. Kids inheriting money. Yeah, well, <laughs> we have a minority viewpoint down here in the front row. <laughs> I think my views on that subject changed when I was about 18. <laughs> Until that point, I thought it would have been a great idea. The, uh, no, I, I am quite a believer in a, uh, a meritocracy, and I think a part of, part of that is uh, not having people start way, way ahead of other people in life based on whether they were lucky enough to come from the right womb or not. So I've never been... Uh, big on the idea that uh, either society benefited or, in many cases, the kids, although I think that's much more problematic, but uh, by the fact that great transfers of wealth uh, will go from uh, one generation to another. I, you know, I, uh, I, would rather, I would rather see the degree of talent possessed by individuals determine the resources they command in this world and their ability to influence other people's lives and command the labor of other people and all of that than, than any divine right of the womb. So it's, uh, uh, and Charlie has a somewhat different view on that. Yeah, I am uh, a little more willing to let the world take the succeeding generations down. It's. He believes in I don't think they need much help. <laughs> Charlie believes in passing it along as long as you're sure they're going to blow it. <laughs> okay, so to, go ahead. If you stop to think, Warren, of the great fortunes of yore, if you go back to 1900, 1870, and you know, name me the people that have vast power because they are in the fourth generation in that family. Some of them are living awfully well, but they are not running the world. I would say the Rockefeller family had considerably more influence than if their, their name had been, uh, you know, just plain rock. <laughs> well, I think that's true, but, but you're picking probably the strongest single family of the piece. And now that it's dispersed among 60 or 70 or 80 Rockefeller, it, uh, I think it's true there were four or five brothers there that had an unusual share of worldly influence. I must say, in that case, I think they handled it very well. <laughs>